We are destroying speculations, first of all. That's ideologies, philosophies, systems of human thought, as we talked about a few weeks ago. That's what we are assaulting. We are attacking these great ideologies, these great philosophical systems, these uh, moral systems that men establish. He further describes them as lofty things, that is, they are characterized by proud human intellectualism, further described in Romans 1, with the words professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. In reality, they are fools, but in their own mind, they are intellectuals. And so we are destroying these ideologies, these philosophies, and every element of proud human intellectualism that is raised up against the knowledge of God. Paul reminds us in Ephesians 6 that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities of pow and powers, the rulers of the darkness of this world, spiritual wickedness in the heavenlies. That is where the battle is fought. It is a spiritual and supernatural battle of ideologies. Listen, ideologies that men have concocted under the influence of demons. Satan concocts the ideologies they become the doctrines of demons. They are espoused through those who, who represent Satan's domain. Fortresses are built out of these ideologies in their foundation. They are rooted in the world and in the culture. And we have to go after them with supernatural weaponry. And what is our goal? End of verse 5. To take every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. We're dealing with thoughts here, folks. We're dealing with thinking, concepts, ideologies, philosophies, viewpoints. But it's amazing to me how confused women are today, even in the church, about their role. And they are confused because there is a massive effort. The troops have been sent out from the fortress called the Feminist Agenda to spread their philosophy throughout this society. Radical feminism has so brainwashed our culture that church leaders and church members have even capitulated to the lies. And as a result, marriage and the family, the primary building blocks of social and moral order, are in shambles. Much of this can be laid at the feet of the feminist movement because it has overturned the thinking of women so dramatically that they have abandoned their God-intended role and consequently the family has felt the consequences. Untaught Christians have become prey to the ideology 
of the feminists. And frankly, most of us probably have no real idea of what the feminist agenda is at its core. It is frightening and it is fatal. What the public sees is that women want equal pay. What the public sees is that women want to be free from certain social strictures. But the real agenda is much more serious. Listen to it. Gloria Steinem, editor of Ms. Magazine, quote, By the year 2000, we will, I hope, raise our children to believe in human potential, not God. Satan's ideologies can't ever just stop with social issues. They always go to theological ones. Radical feminist leader Sheila Cronin, and you've heard the name, I've heard it so many times, she says this, Since marriage constitutes slavery for women, it is clear that the women's movement must concentrate on attacking this institution. Freedom for women cannot be won without the abolition of marriage. As far back as 1971, there was produced by these feminists a document called the Declaration of Feminism. It says this, the end of the institution of marriage is necessary condition for the liberation of women. Therefore, it is important for us to encourage women to leave their husbands and not live individually with men. All of history must be rewritten in terms of oppression of women. We must go back to ancient female religions like witchcraft. By the way, this is largely lesbian-led, and that's why they have that attitude toward men. Uh, Annie Laurie Gaylor, writing in The Humanist, uh, July, August, 1988, has an article called Feminist Salvation. This is what she says. And this affects the elite thinkers at the university level, and it gets taught to the students in the system. So it works its way into the culture. She says this, let's forget about the mythical Jesus. Again, it never stops with a sociology, it always has to ascend to a theology because you've got to get God out of the picture so you can make the Bible a non-issue. Let's forget about the mythical Jesus and look for encouragement, solace, and inspiration from real women. Two thousand years of patriarchal rule under the shadow of the cross ought to be enough to turn women toward the feminist salvation of the world." End quote. Get rid of Jesus. The real salvation of the world is not in him, it is in feminism. Dr. Mary Jo Bain, a feminist and assistant professor of education at Wellesley College, elite women's college, associate director of the school's Center for Research on Women, and there's a deadly think tank, says this, in order to raise children with equality, we must take them away from families and communally raise them. We've got to get them away from any male influence. Margaret Sanger, founder of Planned Parenthood, leading the parade in abortion, said, the most merciful thing a large family can do to one of its infant members is kill it. Now, the reason we have to take these ideas seriously is because they constitute the fortress. They constitute the speculations, the ideologies, the proud intellectualism that is erected in this culture and has a formidable place. They are influencing law. They are influencing the courts. They have a massive influence on education. All you have to do is realize that this is how the university system thinks. That's where the school teachers are all trained, and you see how it filters all the way down through the educational system. They're creating laws at the highest level in our land, laws we have to live by, laws that are obliterating all sense of historic culture. They're being taught through every avenue to our young people. And even Christians, as I said, are falling under the spell of the feminists. Sheila Cronin, again, one of their most respected leaders, says, since marriage constitutes slavery, we have to attack marriage. Attack marriage. And from the National Organization of Women Times, the simple fact is, every woman must be willing to be recognized as a lesbian before she is fully feminine. This isn't something philosophical. This is something theological. But it's not just philosophical, social, and theological. It's moral. What you've got here is the perversion of lesbianism mixed with all of this ideology driving something that is at every point satanic. From the standpoint of the social, it destroys the family. 
From the standpoint of the theological, it destroys God. From the standpoint of the moral, it destroys the normal human relationship and replaces it with an abnormal, wicked homosexuality. Now, most people would say, this is new. This is a new movement. This is something brand new. But the truth is, it is very, very old. Very old. Feminism, with all its assorted features, is an old, old heresy, meant to destroy God's design on every front. It is an ancient form of paganism. In fact, the best way to understand it is that it is a repackaging of what we know if we study church history and the history of religion, ethnology, the history of peoples. This is what could be called ancient Gnosticism. Gnosticism is from the Greek word gnosis, to know. In ancient times, there were always people who said they had the higher knowledge. They were in the know. They had ascended beyond the mundane, the frivolous, trivial, low-level thinking. We're getting assaulted always by those who have the higher knowledge, the secret knowledge, the elevated knowledge. But Gnosticism was more than just a sort of generic idea that you could have superior knowledge to Christianity to make Christianity look base and simplistic and foolish. The best way to understand it is a broad term to describe false anti-God religion. Now, they would say, that's the simple, basic, foolish stuff that the Bible teaches, but the, the ascended knowledge is far beyond that. We call it today the New Age, but it's the Old Age. Ancient Gnosticism was a kaleidoscopic mixture of all kinds of traditions and all kinds of viewpoints. It had the rationalism of the Greek West, it had the mysticism of the Eastern religions, and it was all mixed up, and we see it today replicated in the New Age philosophy. The parallels, by the way, are very, very striking. But at the heart of ancient Gnosticism was the central truth that drove the heresy. That myth was that the physical universe was never intended to exist. The only thing that was ever to exist was a spiritual existence. Much of the ancient Gnostic literature attacks the Creator God and mocks Him with a disdain that borders on hate. But the problem is, we are these wonderful divine beings imprisoned in evil matter. And we have to find a way to escape. By the way, there's no such thing as sin, so there's no such thing as salvation, except delivering us from the bondage of the prison of the flesh. In other words, uh, they just did anything they wanted to fight against their own physical existence. Well, one of the things they told me was that um, he, well, we were, he was at the house one night, and uh, we were talking, we talk, and he started laughing. He said, Aaron, what do you think women's liberation was about? And uh, I said, I, I'm pretty conventional thinking about it at that point. I said, I think it's about women having the right to work, getting equal pay with men, just like they won the right to vote, you know? And he started to laugh. He said, you're an idiot. And I said, why am I an idiot? He said, you want me, let me tell you what that was about. We, the Rockefellers, funded that. We funded Women's Lib, you know? And we're the ones who got all over the newspapers and television, the Rockefeller Foundation. He says, and you want to know why? He said, there were two primary reasons. And they were, one reason was, we couldn't tax half the population before women's live. And the second reason was, now we get the kids in school at an early age. We can indoctrinate the kids how to think. Which it breaks up their family. The, the, the kids start looking at the state as the family, as the school, as the officials, as their family, not as the parents teaching them. And so those are the two prim the primary reasons for women's live, which, which I thought up to that point was a noble thing. You know, when I saw their intentions behind it, where they were coming from when they created it, the thought of it, I saw, I saw the evil behind what I thought was a noble adventure. You know? Aaron, did you know that Gloria Steinem, in one of her own books, now admits the CIA funded Miss Magazine? No, I had no idea about that. No, I never heard that. Yeah, we're gonna... The CIA funded Miss Magazine? Funded Miss Magazine with the stated goal of taxing women and breaking up the family. No kidding. I never heard that. Well, Nick told me. I mean, I mean, I know it, but not because I know the CIA was involved in it. Well, she, Gloria Steinem was proud of it. Oh, the CIA wanted to help me help women. No and, kidding. And so they funded it. Yeah, and, and of course it's divide and conquer. 
Right, and and of what they do is they focus in, obviously, on real problems. Women were getting shafted in many ways, but the elite didn't, wasn't planning to help them. They were planning to really shaft them and take men away from them. Look at what they did with black families. You only had about 10% illegitimacy 50 years ago uh, in black communities, and now it's over 90%. And look at welfare. You were going to give you some money, but you can't have a man in the house. Right. And so that was further to degrade the family, yeah. totally destroyed, uh, and, and, and now illegitimacy is over 50%. In the general population. Right. Well, see, the whole thing is, is these people can 